Hello, you're watching GameSpot Daily, where we cover six news stories in 30 minutes or less. Insert 420 joke here. I'm Callie, and I'm joined by Michael Hyam. I almost forgot about the holiday, national holiday for uh, many of us here in the office, many of us out there in the world. Um, Happy holidays. I feel like I'm on top of the world. <laughs> no, uh, we are... <laughs> We went out drinking last night. And that's oh, don't 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 tell them. We don't do that. No, we drinking tea, of course. Oh yeah. Which well, is... it was it was thirsty. Th so yesterday we we mentioned that it was thirsty Thursday, and boy was we thirsty. Um, CBS... for tea, for tea and water. Yeah. Anyway, uh, CBS hooked us up, so um, we're good. It's sponsored by uh, our company, our parent company, so uh, mm -hmm. it's all right. Drink tea responsibly. Um, we have. But a... don't cry. Don't cry. Which relates to our first story. We have a couple things. We have. Actually, a few related God of War stories. So you get like a triple threat story at the beginning. Then we got oh, yeah. Disgaea. I say Disgaea. It's Disgaea, Disgaea. Or Disgaea. It's Disgaea, Let's right? go with Disgaea. And also, uh, just a shout out, Nintendo Labo is out today. Um, we just got it in the office yesterday, and I am reviewing it. So keep an eye out for that review uh, sometime next week. Cool. You get to play with cardboard boxes for work. Yeah. I'm going to decorate them. What a life. All right. So the first story we have is... Uh, God of War director Cory Barlog was brought to tears after seeing the game's critical praise. Let, let's cut to uh, Mr. Just, Barlog real just quick. Let's cut to him crying. So yeah. he's so this is a review reaction from Cory Barlog. He posted this, uh, and it's him seeing the review scores for the first time. So the 94 on Metacritic brought him to tears, and you can see, like, oh, he's so sweet. <laughs> Oh, Look this at is, him. He's so emotional. He has some dope glasses. I was, I was mentioned this earlier when we were watching the video. It's like he's got a sweet haircut. He's got some dope glasses. He's got a little axe on his shirt. Like he's look at it. Oh, he's such a proud dad. I know. Um, happy for him. A quote from him. He says, "It shouldn't matter, but I'm just so fucking proud. I'm just so lucky to work with the people that I work with. I'm glad I didn't fuck it up." Oh, that is the most relatable thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Cory Bar Cory Barlog took, uh, I guess you would say, a lot of risks with the way God of War went, because we were talking to the Matt Espinelli and I were talking to the team about like the design of the actual game itself, and uh, we had a previous story in which, uh, what is it? He wanted to do it for uh, the Tomb Raider reboot, the mm -hmm. single camera shot, and he said, um, I want to do it uh, this way, and they said no, so that's why God of War is the way it is, mm -hmm. and essentially. What he, what the developers were telling us is that uh, Corey said to them, "Look, we're gonna do it this way. However, you can make it happen. Just make it happen. Yeah. Like we're gonna do the single cam shot. It's gonna be a third person over shoulder. It's gonna be um, the how. This is how combat's gonna be. Uh, but just make it happen. And then so for him to actually see that vision, uh, vision come to fruition, mm -hmm. I think that uh, that's really it's neat. Yeah. And then he's uh, getting very emotional about it. And then. We have some more God of, God of War things, but one thing I want to say is he also said um, that he considered not posting that video of him oh, crying. Right. Yeah. Um, and he said in a tweet, I debated on whether or not to upload, but I thought it would be a good, I would be a good papa and show my son it's okay to cry. Hey, which is, that's true. Which is the dopest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. That is, that's a man right there. Uh, and also just is a reminder that um, the people who make games are human beings and they're, they're people. Human beings. And... As fun it is, as it can be to just just drag something just to smithereens when you don't like it, mm -hmm. um, it is you know it's people making something. Yeah, this so. is their work. Yeah. they put their you know you know how long it takes to develop games. It takes years, mm -hmm. and so when when people pour their passion into games for uh, for several years and get the final product and see people play it, whether it be good or bad, you know you have to think that you know. So much, so much work goes into these things. They're not mm -hmm. just like copy and pasted uh, from another game, and then they just like, oh, release it like that. And it's you know, people pour their hearts into these games. Mm -hmm. So when you do like a game, make sure you show appreciation for that because that's what keeps them going. Yeah, I think. Um, okay, so after, on that sweet note, uh, we have related news which you've seen on the screen if you're watching. Mm -hmm. um, PlayStation announced on Twitter that God of War is getting a photo mode. Um, which is, it can be pretty funny because you can manipulate Kratos and uh, Atreus' faces. Um, so you can pause to rotate the camera. You can change the field of view. V wait, field of vision? Uh, field, field of view. I was right. All right. Yeah. Cool. And change the focal length. You can change their faces, like I said, and you can pose for shots. Yeah. And we have some uh, some amazing <laughs> shots over here if you're, if you're watching with us. Look at this. Look at this. Scrolling through Kratos' face. Huh? Uh, 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 um, hey. <laughs> oh. This, yeah, this is, this is creeping me out. Low key. But 
yeah, so photo mode, just like Horizon Zero Dawn, I, I guess. Uh, I had a lot of fun with Horizon Zero Dawn's photo mode. Hey, you know, that's a great transition, actually. Is it? Because one of the things that happened today also was that Horizon Zero Dawn developer Guerrilla Games congratulated Sony Santa Monica on God of War on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Lots of love going around oh, for yeah, God yeah. of War. But yeah, that photo mode, I had a lot of fun with that because that game is gorgeous, too. Mm -hmm. it, it it almost uh, screwed up my pacing with the game because every, every like five minutes I wanted to stop and take a take a picture take a photo, take a photo. in photo mode and mm -hmm. you know changing the time of day where the sun is well like because we, well if you change the time of day it'll change where the sun is like duh uh, <laughs> but yeah the ca camera angle fov it's really fun but for me it's like oh man i i have to i'm in the middle of this quest i'm in the middle of this boss fight but uh, hold up let me take a picture real quick yeah so you got to do that with in god of war which is i would say probably the best looking ps4 game to date mm -hmm. yeah yeah Lots um, of God of War stuff because it's out today. We've been, I feel like it's out been out today. for so long know, because we've been talking about it uh, ever since that we got it in the office. Mm -hmm. And our review went up uh, last, well, everyone, more or less everyone's review went up. Yeah, the up embargo last, lifted last, last week. week. Yeah. So, and I've been watching everyone play it here in the office. And I was like, oh, it came out today. So it is out today. Yeah. I still haven't had a chance to really play it because I have been on other projects and I'm really, really excited to play it this weekend. After all of these um, positive reviews and just Corey Barlog being being a, a being dude. a real one, <laughs> yeah, being a real dude. Um, all right, uh, we got we got a story on a a game that maybe will not be dead. <laughs> uh, that that's that's uh, that's up to Bungie to decide. It is. I guess. Uh, no, so that was mean. Um, so some of Destiny 2's exotics are getting redesigns, and Bungie has shared previews of them. This mm -hmm. is ahead of the Warmind DLC, um, which is coming out in May, yeah. I believe. Um, which I'm interested in checking it out. So um, some of these exotics are ones I actually used a lot when I uh, played Destiny regularly. So I was, I was actually kind of interested in this. So <clears throat> in February, um, well, I guess overview of the exotics. They're changing the Graviton Lance, the Skyburner's Oath, and Rat King. Oh yes, uh, do, uh, I can I can help uh, read off some of the changes that are um, coming. Okay, I just want to sh say, Graviton Lance was my first exotic in Destiny Two, okay. and I I do have a, sp a soft spot for yeah, it. Yeah, special place in your heart. Special place in my heart for Graviton Lance. Do you want to know how the Graviton Lan Graviton? Gra Graviton? I don't know how to pronounce Graviton just, Lance is changing. Yeah, and we could actually you know well let let's see how it changes while you read it off. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, player feedback on the Graviton Lance was largely. Uh, was largely that it l looked and sounded uh, great, though it wasn't actually all that useful in combat, especially in PvP. So Bungie, yeah, as far as pulse rifle goes, pulse rifles go, I'd much rather use um, nightshade. Uh, so b b uh, Bungie reduced the recoil of, of the burst and added some aim assist and changed it from three rounds to two. Mm -hmm. Which is weird for a pulse. Um, pulse are usually through three rounds. Um, they also tuned the ragdolling so that instead of because you know the the, gravi the graviton lance, like its main hook is that it like sends enemies flying because mm -hmm. it's like a gravity burst. Um, so they tuned the ragdolling on that. Uh, so instead of them quote violently flying backwards and out of range of splash damage, opponents now float back and up. Um, cool. And the idea is to give this like it has the spectacle of an exotic, but it's to make it a little more effect effective. The explosion is also a lot bigger mm -hmm. and with more damage and target se seeking projectiles. Cool. That's right. what's up. Run me through Skyburner's Oath. Skyburner's Oath. Uh, senior design uh, John Wisniewski uh, said the Skyburner's Oath almost has the opposite problem of the Graviton Lance. It's a completely strong... Wait, what is it? It's a comparatively strong weapon, effective at multiple ranges, strong aim down sight, and from the hip uh, with varying fire rates. However, it lacks spectacle and gives it... Uh, that gives it... That would give it an exotic weapon feel. So Bungie has given Skyburner's Oath projectiles explosive rounds as their default impact response, according to the uh, Bungie update. Um, firing from the hip causes it to lob slower projectiles than ADS and at a faster rate of fire. Um, they track targets and explode now. And uh, to actually to clarify, Skyburner's Oath is a scout rifle, if you didn't know that. Okay, yeah. Uh, and also, what, what, uh, there's some other changes uh, mm -hmm. being made. Uh, reducing the preci precision scaler, if y'all know what that means. I don't know what that means. Uh, a bit. And Precision scalar, um, as far as I know, scalar is like a programming and like math term. So it's it's actually kind of an inside baseball term for them to use. Ooh, but they, they're reducing the like precision aiming of the, the scout rifle in favor of increasing damage. Oh, okay, cool. 
That's dope. All right, and the Rat King is actually going to be good this time? I'm so excited about this. So when Destiny 2 came out, we were working so hard to get Rat King. It was this whole thing. Rat King's a really complex quest, and the gun uh, increases um, different stats the more people in your fire team have it equipped and are using it. So one of the big changes is that now you just have to have it in your kinetic weapon slot. You don't have to be mm. using it actively for those um, modifiers to be active. Um, of the stats that improve when multiple fire fire team members equip Rat King, the strongest is probably the increased rate of fire. And the quote from the Bungie update is, unfortunately, the DPS potential is hard to realize because some people just can't physically pull the trigger fast enough to cash in on the benefit. Um, so they're switching it to full auto to make that more effective. Um, also, is um, uh, no, that's okay. We we pulled out Rat King during the raid and it didn't go very well, which is Rat King is it was not a good gun uh, before. So hopefully the um, full auto helps. It also the stat increasing purse per, purse perk will stack uh, more drastically for like the first two. I think it says. Okay. Um, yeah, the first the first one or two fire team members that stack it, yeah. so you can see more of a difference with a smaller fire team. Yeah. And lastly, or the the base invisibility timer of Vermin has uh, been up to seven seconds. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what that means? Uh, you know, I don't remember because I'd never used Rat King. So if you do know what that means, just know that. And lastly, Bungie uh, teased a masterwork upgrade, so mm -hmm. uh, which says it's going to put a uh, tasty garnish on this meal you won't want to miss out on. Which I still am not sold on masterwork weapons, so maybe with Warmind they'll make it more of something I want to do. Um, and you can see all of the updates, um, not just for exotic weapons, in Bungie's update for this week. Yeah. If you still care about Destiny 2, there are cool things on the way and changes being made. Yeah. All right. Third story. We got High School Sports Association will sanction esports, but it won't include shooters. This comes yeah. from Polygon. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, I'll... Yeah, go ahead. I, I'll, uh, I can help out with this one. The National Federation of High School uh, Sports will soon acknowledge esports. So esports is real. It's an actual sport. If you're not on the train, get on the train because it's going. Uh, the NFHS administers the rules for high school sports nationwide. And Mark Koski, the CEO of NFHS Network, says, We have continued to track esports over the past 18 months and believe that the timing is perfect for us. We know esports isn't just uh, up and coming. It's here. Like I said, <laughs> we believe if we can have a partner with an esports focused company to help facilitate this, it is much better for students uh, to be behind the education, uh, behind the education walls between the hours of 2.30 to uh, 5.30 versus being at their home or the friend's home. So they're trying to sanction esports. Wait, wait, wait. I want to back that up. It's better for kids to be at school than at home because kids need to always be at school. Whatever. That's I love fine. being at school, man. I miss high school. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, high school is dope. So uh, uh, if you love high school too and you're a high school kid, man, you could stick around and play some Dota. Yeah, you can, but not Counter-Strike. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. They didn't name any specific games, but it'll include MOBAs, uh, sports games, and fighting games, but deliberately not including shooters. And Koski's quote is, first-person shooter games we believe do not fit within the education mindset that we're hoping to bring to this activity. Yeah. I would like to point out that why does beating the living hell out of somebody in a fighting game, why is that better because you use your fists i don't know <laughs> I, I i i guess i think like, it's a little silly if i'm if i'm an administrator and i walk by i was like hey y'all doing that esports thing like if i walk by and they're playing like street fire and we're like okay that's that's what's up but if i see them like playing cs like hey and i'm hearing the comms over because then the terrorists I'm, yeah when i think about it like if someone's listening to me playing counter-strike they're like damn what do you do i'm like hey plant the bomb plant the bomb move the bomb like hey watch that's my back good hey good point good point. i pick up my m4 and blast them full like I was like, oh, I don't know if well, you want to do that. Be doing that in in uh, in school. So, I kind of see what they're getting at with this. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, I understand because, of course, the political climate. If you're in the U.S. Uh, around guns in schools has, has been, uh, ex it's been a lot to say the least. We yes. won't get into that, obviously, right, right, right. but that does make sense. I mm -hmm. just, I think. Whatever. Uh, the NFHS will partner with Play VS Play Versus. I don't know how you pronounce that, to build the necessary infrastructure for esports competitions. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So they will allow for state competitions. Individual states can choose which games are allowed for their students. Mm -hmm. States may include an FPS if they choose, 
but it'll be separate from the NFHS infrastructure and won't get promoted. Okay. So I guess that's kind of a nice like loophole. Yeah. And tournaments are going to begin next year. So this is happening sooner than I had initially thought. Sorry, seniors. Hey, y'all graduating out there, get, getting to your, your college esports team, I guess. At Berkeley, there's a StarCraft team. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember uh, uh, when I was when I was in high school, people were talking about like, hey, we're going to Berkeley and we're going to take the StarCraft uh, strategy class. Because mm -hmm. I, I think I was like a one unit class in at Berkeley. And I was like, damn, I want to play that. Actually, I want to teach that. Actually, I should teach that because I'm, I'm firing StarCraft, boy. Uh, yeah, you did a StarCraft uh, anniversary 20, feature. 20 years, yo. That's yeah. a long ass time. Anyway... Uh, that's really cool. Cool opportunity for kids to get into gaming. <laughs> I know that like when I was in high school, it was definitely not cool to play video games, yeah. and I had to hide it from everybody. <laughs> R real quick on this note of like not having FPSs sanctioned by the school, I remember not, when I, I thought about this too, is that um, I, in Filipino class, and I think um, my homies will remember this, uh, that if they're watching. <laughs> So in Filipino class, we had to do a we had to create a video where it's like inst instructing someone to do something. But yeah, it has to be in Tagalog. And mm. so I, we, I did that with my friends, but I did like a Counter-Strike guide video. Oh, that's cool. But the thing was that we had to present it in front of class. So then me, my dumbass is thinking like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I was like heavy into my CS days uh, when I was, this is in ninth grade. Yeah, I was heavy into my CS days and I did a video explaining like strategies in Counter-Strike in Tagalog, like for my class. That's and then really so cool. I was like, oh yeah, this video is fire. So I show it on the TV and my teacher is like, yo, I don't think we should be showing this because I was like, oh, this is how you use an op. Like, oh, you got to like get headshots and stuff. And mm -hmm. she was like, we're going to stop showing this video. And it's and I was like, I think I about think it now. Sense. Yeah. And I thought about it like, yeah, my bad. Hey, but the video was fire. So, but, hey, it's really cool that you use that opportunity to do something with a game. That's yeah. Cool. So video games in schools. It's happening. It's ha it has always been happening. Yeah. So, but just for the record, it's been there's been studies that prove that there's no correlation between violence and violent video games. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we got a cool, cool uh, story for you weeaboos out there. Yay! Disgaea 1 is getting a remake for Nintendo Switch and PS4 this yeah. year. So, uh, NIS America, which um, they do a lot of cool anime stuff. Uh, and they call it Ichi Software. Yes. That's, yeah, that's what the NIS stands for. Yes. Um, it's releasing a Disgaea 1 Complete on both platforms, um, so Switch and PS4, to commemorate the game's 15th anniversary, which is really cool. Yeah, it's a, yeah this is a, um, a tactical RPG. So if you think about Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactics Ogre, mm -hmm. it's very similar to that. You know, I want to show we have an image that compares the two, oh, yeah. so let's look at that first. Um, so, yeah, this is a remake of... Did you say the, the build point? Oh, no, no, no. Well, I, I was pulling that. Okay, it's a remake of the PS2 tactical RPG, Disgaea Hour of Darkness, which came out in 2003, as you can see. So this is the original 2003 graphics, which, honestly, it, look, it looks really cute. I like the pixel art a lot. And then this is the remake graphics, which uses the same um, uh, visuals or similar visuals to 2015's Disgaea 5. Mm -hmm. um, and Disgaea 5 Complete ended up releasing on the Switch in 2017. Mm -hmm. It originally came out uh, for P just PS4 in 2015. Okay. Um, It'll feature the same story and gameplay as the original version, so it's not going to be uh, changed on that front. Uh, albeit the vi improved visuals, oh, yeah, they'll be, yeah, they'll be similar to uh, 2015's Disgaea 5. Mm -hmm. um, Disgaea 5 uh, Complete released on Switch in 2017, so you can get uh, you can still play this mm -hmm. series on this, or you can play a series on the Switch like now, but uh, to get that sweet remake. You have to wait a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, PC version of Disgaea 5 is also planned for this year. So if, you're, if you don't have a Switch or a PS4, you can play on PC. Yeah. So lots of Disgaea stuff for, yeah. for you fans. Um, there's also a... Uh, we'll, we'll get to this. Uh, okay. The remake also features the Etna mode, which includes characters not present in the original release. Um, Etna mode was available in the PSP and DS remakes. Disgaea has been remade tons of times. Um and it's an alternate storyline that focuses on the character Etna instead of La Laurel. Etna, Etna mode? <laughs> you did, have, have you, you no capes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm glad you got that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's also a uh, $100 special Rose and Queen's Finest Edition, which I that's a fancy title. Um, and it includes all sorts of things, including what looks like a titty mouse pad. So we got a copy of the game for either Switch or PS4. We got official soundtrack, official hardcover art book, um, enamel pin set, which is at the bottom, you really nine small. Nine in total. Um, 
Orthodox Prinny coaster set, you mm-hmm. know, because NISA does the Prinny stuff. The dude, you know, the D O O D. That's yes. the, the mascot. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So, sorry. This isn't a titty mouse pad. It's literally, it says no pie, Etna, flat mouse pad. Fla- literally, yeah, fla- they clarified. Th- this, this got me thinking about uh, Shiva's mouse pad. The Genji Shiva ma- has a Genji ass mouse pad that's like the, the anime boobs ones, but it's Genji's butt. It's yeah, it's it, and he's he's looking back at you too. So he's like <laughs> he's like hey. It's uh, it's something. I love anime. Um, why don't you why don't you finish? <laughs> oh, yeah, these yeah, out? sure. Sorry. Uh, get poster of darkness. Uh, it's terror resistant poster and love another those. netherworld unbound. This is also terror resistant poster. Uh, you get a pretty cute plush, Rosen Queen certificate of authenticity, so you know it's real. Uh, pretty pouch collector's box as well, so you can uh, keep all your dope disguise collectibles in there. mm Hmm. Uh, Disgaea Hour of Darkness, um, originally when it came out, received an 8.1 out of 10 in GameSpot's review. Ooh, this, so this was back in 2003, so I think GameSpot was still doing the... 100-point scale. The 100-point scale, but also the you you rate the graphics, gameplay, sound, and then reviewers tilt. Oh, yeah. man, those are the days, man. Um, So Greg Kasavin says... Kasavin. It's Kasavin? Greg Kasavin. Oh, man, you Trust OG me, I, GameSpot fan? Hey, I know all about, all, I know all about my GameSpot history. <laughs> um. He said, at the time, it's a game that's unorthodox above all else and filled with plenty of cheeky humor, some likable characters, a number of intriguing gameplay elements, and many, many hours of turn-based combat. This is one of those games that could literally last you a couple hundred hours if you let it, and if that sounds exciting rather than just plain scary, then by all means, give the game a shot. Even if you don't end up leveling your characters into the hundreds or thousands, you'll still probably be glad you got as far as you did. Whoa. Whoa. I get no time. Yeah, that's that's dope. Uh, Greg Sovin, I trust his word. And if you don't know what he's up to now, he's hours. with Super Giant Games. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that man, sweet you, GameSpot lore, man. You got that GameSpot lore on lock. Uh, yeah. And so anyway, if you've never played Disgaea, um, now's your chance to check it out with um, in, improved visuals. Even though it's been remade several times, now you get the top notch, the newest of the new. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can. This is. I don't. I'm not too familiar with Disgaea, but uh, if you want to start with the first one, this is a dope is jumping off point because there are five mainline ones. I know they have a couple spinoffs as yeah, well. Yeah, Disgaea has all sorts of stuff. I've always liked the art style. It's super cartoony. It almost reminds me of like Studio Trigger animation or like uh like Gainax. Um, like it. It's. I just like the anim- uh the art style a lot. So anyway, cool. there's that. We only have so much time left. So we got to speed through these. Ooh. Whew. Deadpool 2 director, I didn't pull up the B-roll, hold on. That's all right. De- Deadpool 2 director, and I got to delete, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm so stressed. Okay. <laughs> David Le- Lech? Leach. Leach. Will David di- Leach. <laughs> you, man, you, you, you got these pronunciations. We'll direct a movie based on The Division. Why not? Why not oh yeah, sure, sure. Um, so it will have Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, Jessica Chastain. Cool. Uh, yeah, and uh, The Division movie will, uh, well, okay. Jill and Hall and uh, Chastain have been uh, attached to the project uh, since the outset and are persistent in ensuring the tone of the movie matches that of the video game. I have a couple feelings about this. Uh, I think that The Division has has an open lore in a way. I, I think that if there is going to be an action movie based on a video game, Division isn't too bad because it's it's fairly s- standard premise. Mm-hmm. So they have the room to kind of take whatever direction they want. Like if they want to go with like the mainline Division story, like that's fine. Yeah, uh, but if they want to take some creative creative freedom with it, it could be a pretty standard or good action movie. Maybe this is your chance to make a good video game movie because uh, maybe it's 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 more it's I mean it has Tom Clancy in the name. It does, and uh, you know if you watch some of All Fears with Ben Affleck <laughs> and Morgan Freeman, I think they were in it. That movie wasn't that great. <laughs> well, I I mean we'll see. I mean apparently Rampage, which I have not seen with The Rock, is. Supposed Supposedly, like one of the better video game movies. So. He was celebrating a fifty-three percent on Rotten Tomatoes. He's <laughs> like, "Yes, finally, a video game movie is well received." Woo, and I was like, "Oh, the bar is so low." Yeah. Um, Celebrate what you can. Yeah. Anyway, so there's that fun fact. That was a quickie. And then, no, I'm not going to say that again. Um, quick story. Finally, Tim Schafer would love to remaster more Lucas Arts adventure games. This comes from PC Gamer. You love Tim Schafer. I do love Tim Schafer. I talked to Tim Schafer at GDC, and mm-hmm. I said what's up to him. Uh, but yeah, uh, Double Fine has remastered games like Grim Fandango, Full Throttle, and Day of the Tentacle, some uh, adventure mm-hmm. games that I am very familiar with that I love very deeply. Uh, and Tim Schafer spoke to uh, spoke at uh, Resid and said that the team would gladly do more. Quote, 
he said, we'd love to. And in some ways, it's up to Disney because LucasArts, those were originally LucasArts right. games. So Disney would have to be the one to approve mm -hmm. uh, a reboot. Uh, but he continued, if they want to do that, uh, obviously. And if the original creators want to be involved, that's what makes those remasters special. Uh, that of the original creators came back and were able to say what they want to improve on and what to leave alone. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, Double Fine is, is, I like Double Fine. I, know you uh, do. I do like Monkey Island. I think Monkey Island is my favorite of the LucasArts adventure point and click games. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, Schaefer says that his main, uh, main goal is to still make new games, uh, but he does enjoy going back to the classics, of course. Right. And he says, you should always be trying to pull out new ideas, but then 20 years go by for some of the go by for some of these games. It's been enough time that there's some value in going back and looking at classic games. Also, they were falling apart. They weren't available anymore. They didn't uh -huh. run, so you'd have to pirate them if you wanted to buy some of them. We thought it was time. Also, the source material was aging. A lot of it was on tape drives that are crumbling. Some of the team had passed away. While everyone's still around, let's make a definitive version of this game. We can get the team back together to comment on it and gather that art, go to the archives, and find what we can find. So I like that it's he's taking this like game preservation angle to it, uh -huh. um, which I think is is really cool. One of the cool things about remastered games is there there are games that are just like you can't play anymore because they they like they, it's hard to are, run on modern modern hardware yeah. or mo modern OSs because I know for a very long time, where like the Windows Seven XP to Windows Seven era, it was very hard to get a, to actually play games like Grim Fandango or like all the mon old Monkey Island mm -hmm. games because you have to do a lot of a lot of finagling with like .ini files mm -hmm. or downloading like third party apps that will trick your OS into running as if it was like Windows 98 or like DOS or some, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, there was a, a for a while there was a very it was very hard to play these old games but then with remasters obviously not only do you get improved visuals but you just get a simple way to play these. Yep games and uh yeah shouts out to tim schaefer he won the lifetime achievement at a uh, uh, gdc this year yeah and he won a bafta award as well he gave such a nice speech too yeah it was yeah. is he had like a very long heartfelt speech and then mm -hmm. i uh, spoke with him backstage and uh, f uh funny thing is that i asked him I was like oh um what would you say to someone who has actually hasn't played any of uh your games of the past like full throttle or grim fandango and he said he said um you know there's so many great games nowadays so they should just move on and play modern games like but um Aww. maybe that that was his way is like modern games as in my remastered version Yo, so yeah uh, but i would highly encourage you if you're into point and click old school point and click adventure games uh to um dig into double fines remasters and mm -hmm. uh the things that they're doing nowadays because tim, tim schaefer is uh one of the one of the best uh i would say uh personalities in the industry one of the great great game creators of our time mm-hmm all right, that's all the time we have mm -hmm. today. Um, but I do want to do a quick shout out to, we got a new Potato Mode up today. If you don't know, Potato Mode is our show where Joey Yi uh, takes a partner and they just totally break the graphics of a game. Uh, they did um, Far Cry 5. They, they did Crisis they as did, well. They did Crisis, which is hilarious. They did, God, uh, not God of War, they did uh, GTA 5. Yes. Um, and this, today's episode, it's every Friday on GameSpot. Today is 2016 Doom, and that's what John Luke, John Luke Seipke is a big Bethesda boy. Jonathan Lucas. Jonathan Lucas. That's not his name. No, his name is not John. It's John Luke. But uh, so they they did that. So check that out. It's a fun time. It's, it's always a, great a fun time. time. Potato was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you to Matt Paget, Tony Wilson, Chris Pereira, Eric Tag, Emily Conti, and all of you. Thank you all. For uh, yeah, this is closing out our second week of GameSpot Daily. We are uh, we're you know we're working workshopping things, mm -hmm. continually trying to get better, uh, making sure that we're prepared better. And uh, yeah, we we do this we do this for y'all, and we hope that you will stick around for us uh, as we uh, improve our show because we have a lot of people who are um, who are happy doing this. This makes this makes us happy, mm -hmm. and I hope it makes you happy. We have a f we have fun. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Goodbye. And we'll see you Monday. Enjoy your Friday. And be safe. Come back next week. Because we're not going anywhere. <laughs> Goodbye.